Hello, Math 4110 enthusiasts. Gosh, it's good to see you today. My name is Matthew Kennedy. I'll be doing a video today for our discussion one board in the videos in the history of math. And I'm going to give you guys my three themes uh, that I took away from those three videos and hopefully also connect it to some standards, SMPs, some practices that we use and will use in our classrooms as future AYA mathematic educators. So the first theme I have is mathematics as a subject, as a discipline, is an ongoing and never ending process. And I think that's a very self explanatory theme, but at the same point, it's something that has to be said. You know, this ain't no history, you know, World War II, Civil War, the Mayans and their calendars and Egyptian pyramids, uh, Cleopatra, all that stuff. It's not just facts. It's not just things in the past. Okay, this was Cleopatra. This is what she did. Uh, this is World War II, and this is what it is. Mathematics is more than just facts. It's more than just this is what this was. We study it. We talk about it. We move on. Mathematics is something that we can, it's a never ending process. You know, just because today, you know, January 2022, yeah, we think that we have all these mathematic principles, these concepts. And, you know, by watching those three videos, it kind of looks like, okay, mathematics has been founded and it's really been discovered and we're done. But it's far from that. You know, by watching those videos, especially John, he said it perfectly um, in the first video. He said, we could be here for 50 weeks talking about the history of math. Because it's not only that there's so much in the past, but there's also so much to come for mathematics. And yeah, a circle is a circle, and a circle, the area is pi r squared. And I know that it might seem like there's only so much we can do with the circle. Who knows? Years from now, there could be better ways to go about it. There could be better technological tools to display for students. And again, it's more about the teacher perspective. We can learn about the history of math. We can learn about, you know, how math has evolved, but how we teach it and how differently we might teach it years from now is what shows as pretty much evidence that mathematics is an ongoing and never ending process. Yeah, I get it. You know, it's content, it's facts, but you think about how far these mathematicians have went, Euler, Lobatol, you know, Pythagoras, all these great mathematicians in the past, right? They did all the dirty work in finding all this stuff, right? But it's how we utilize it today and in the future that will make it that ongoing process. Number two is there is more to math than answers. And I think this is a very subtle one from the videos, um, but it's, it's a statement that I always love to say. It's like saying a student is much more than their grade. And we are being future teachers. You know, we take a step aside. The thing about math as more than just answers. Math is more than just, again, a circle is a circle. How can we teach it to our students in such a way that, you know, they will recognize circular properties, circumference, radius, diameter, you know, all this kind of stuff. How can we teach it in a, you know, in an effective way where, you know, when we learn about trig and sine and cosine and Sokotoa, you know, all that stuff, you know, you really think about it. How can we teach mathematics in a way where it's like, okay, our students can actually have a better understanding of it. And not just for that day, but for the future and beyond, right? When we talk about mathematics as being more than an answer, and th this goes back to John's. Now, first of all, I'm a little bit biased, but I really enjoyed John's video more than the other two, partly because he had the best combination of, of, of information, but not being super dry. So really like John's video. Keith was, he, he was dry. Okay, he went to Stanford, he's dry, he, he, he talked quick, but, and Keith kind of went into even like uh, uh, 
Bernoulli's Law, I'm going to boost that name, Bernoulli's Law, about why airplanes fly. We're not engineers, okay? But, but, but look, you know, going back to John's video, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to think about how back then with the Greeks and all that stuff, they really thought about just the answers. They thought about, hey, look, here's a triangle. You know, I have a right triangle. I have two legs, right? And we're going to square both of them. That's going to equate the square of the hypotenuse. And, you know, hence the name Pythag Pythagorean Theorem and Pythagoras formulated that a little bit more formally in the future. But, you know, you really think about what John said, and it's the truth. As history went on, we started back with, you know, some base foundations, foundational structural knowledge, right? But as that went on, we, we evolved our thinking more into proofs, understanding, you know, and really saying, does this work for all cases? Is this really true, what that mathematician said? And towards the end, towards the end of John's video, he spoke about triangles and how the whole 180 theorem, you know, triangles, they're always going to be 180 or whatever. What if I have a fat triangle? What if I have a thin triangle, right? Now, although it's got to be some straight sides, right? And there's some rules and fundamentals and triangles, right? But see how people questioned. And that's why math will always be more than just answers. You hear an answer. Let's talk about how you got there. You know, the second video, my biggest takeaway was the whole pie thing, right? We had different countries come up with different stuff. There were now, now, now. What now? What kind of shocked me was there was this myth that there was a cult, and the whole rational, irrational thing. It was a secret that the square root of two was an irrational number, and they didn't want that information leaked. Okay. Now, if that's not nerdy, I don't know what more could be nerdy, right? But look, you know, you really think about the square root of two, right? You know, we really think about, you know, what makes it an irrational number? Yeah, I get it. You know, it is, it's not, whatever. Prime composite is what, but what makes it that, right? And so when you really think about, you know, you know, pi and with it being 22 over 7, how did we get there, right? It's a process. And it's just, it's, it's just respectable. That's all I got to say. The third theme I have is, although it was kind of underlined the first two, it's still a unique one. There are numerous and infinite ways to go about mathematics. Dr. Breyer said it perfectly in our 3400 class for us, uh, uh, us 3400 folks in uh, Methods 1. He said, when we talk about perimeter, there was a fourth grader who took, he took the, the cutout and he did this. And he rotated it, right? And he knew the distance, cover, be the perimeter. There are different ways to go about mathematical tasks, mathematical problems. When all these mathematicians discovered stuff, you know, now this is a science connection, but you know, the whole gravity thing with Newton and other stuff, you know, Euler's method, right? When people discover those kind of mathematical concepts, mathematical principles, all that stuff, they probably went about it in a way that maybe someone else would have went about it, would have went about it differently, sorry. Um, and it's just like, you think about what these mathematicians did in the past, and it's like, how different their thinking was. If everyone thought the same, you know, going to Napier and Briggs, back to John's video with Napier and Briggs, with the whole, you know, logarithmic functions, you really think they thought about logs the same way? I mean, yeah, today it's universally accepted that the natural log has base E, but do you think that everyone started that way? You know, if there were a group of people at a table and we said, go, you know, go think about log functions, and Briggs is a famous mathematician, I believe it was either the 1600s or 1700s, 
but he made his own log tables. And he sat there for weeks, months, days. And he thought about how can we really come to the E, the value of E that we have today. When we think about how we go about mathematics today in the 21st century, it's using technological tools. I'm going to use Desmos. Great. I'm going to use a pen and paper. Right? So we really think about how we go about mathematics, just like pi, all those countries, different ways to go about it, right? We think about even a mathematical proof, right? There's different ways. To, is it going to be by deduction? Is it going to be proved by exhaustion? Or is it going to be proved by, you know, inductive reasoning, right? There's, there's different ways to go about math. And it was clearly shown by not only developing all these stuff, even calculus. You know, people probably have different views on calculus. People said, okay, you're going to find the area under the curve by exhaustion, by, you know, getting all those shapes and getting in there, right? I'm just going to do an integral, right? People did different ways to go about math and how we got to today's formulas, methods, a squared plus B squared plus C squared, right? For the Pythagorean theorem, right? How we got to that formula, there were different ways people thought about it to get the final, you know, kazaz, right? The final product. I want to spend the last five minutes going over the standards and the connections to our future classrooms. With math being an ongoing and never ending process, my first theme, the first thing I'm going to connect it to is really it's actually all the standards that exist. I mean, I know this is kind of a weird, you know, way, weird way to connect to the standards, but I can't really list one standard. You think about, you know, pre-K through 12 education with math being an ongoing and never ending process. I mean, I could give you a different standard each day for the rest of your life if you, you know, if it behooves you to do so and you want to do mathematics for the rest of your life, you can learn something new every day. You know, SMP1, persevere in problem solving. You know, we could be here all day solving mathematical tax, right? So standards each year, you know, ninth grade algebra, 10th grade geometry, every year they're going about these never ending processes. There is no such, you know, it, it, it's, not ex, it's non-existent. There is no one standard or a couple standards that, that can sum up the idea of math is a never ending process. And our goal as educators is, you know, as a as an AYA point of view, from seventh grade to twelfth grade, we're not going to be able to teach everyone not only the whole history of math. You know, when they leave that geometry classroom, we can't teach them everything about geometry. But I'll tell you what we can do. We can give them a, you know, when they enter to leave, we can give them a great foundation and a great exiting point that they can continue on for the rest of their mathematical careers. Number two, with the whole, there is more than, there is more to math than answers. I thought about proof writing, standards for geometrical proof writing. You know, when we think about the whole geometry thing, we think about the whole, you know, uh, and, and trust me, proofs were tough back in uh, high school. I was a ninth grade geometry student. Um, and, you know, I really thank my teacher to this day. Her, uh, uh, her name was Miss Scott. And she really pushed me and the rest of my students, my fellow classmates, to, because it, it was an honors class, but she pushed us to find more than one way to solve that proof. Because, it, you know, it elicits our thinking and it sheds some light to seeing things in more than one perspective. When you're explaining questions, there's standards, you know, I'm not really sure if there's one specific standard, but I know to this day, if I go through all the standards, there's probably one generic one that says, especially in statistics, explain your conclusion findings, your p-value. We find that this p-value of 0.03 we're going to reject our null hypothesis. You have to explain your answer. I got an answer of 0.03. What does that mean? Right? 
Students need to be able to explain their rationale for how they got there, right? You know, I have an answer. What does that mean? And that's, that sums up, there is more to math than answer. SMP4, model your answer. Model an illustration that shows me a connection to real life. Math is more than an answer. There's context to it. Show it. Number three, there are numerous ways to go about mathematics. SMP5, how about using tools strategically? I'm gonna use a compass. I'm gonna use my hand. I'm gonna use an online you know, web program, GeoGebra, right? When we talk about standards, you know, numerous, which go about mathematics, I mean, you could say proof writing too, but even statistics, right? We think about with stats, about how we can go about different ways in proving, you know, probability, you know, proving that, oh, you know, independency, you know, all that stuff, you know, I, you know, I can go about algebra, finding roots. Am I going to graph the function? Am I going to factor it? You know, am I going to use the uh, fundamental theory of, you know, the, the fundamental root theorem in modern, uh, modern algebra, Kim Rogers? So it's like, you know, there is different ways to go about mathematics. It's a matter of, as instructors, as future, you know, AYA educators, you know, those three themes I just said, how can we really, you know, how can we get our students to really understand these, these concepts? So hopefully 16 minutes suffice. We're going to go from there. Uh, thanks for listening. Take care and give your thoughts.